period after Mac, Louisiana Purchase, coming into the period of the tariff board. As we discussed earlier, the colonial period of Arkansas, as it was called, uh, there's really not a whole lot to it. Uh, there's a few uh, interesting little details here and there, but uh, nothing really significant or long-lasting, at least from a European perspective. Native Americans be uh, forced out to shortly after the American arrival of the 1830s and 1840s. And uh, the uh, population of the Spanish and the French was so small but, uh, uh, and undeveloped as to not left any kind of impact on the state at all. The only uh, lasting impact was a few French place names. Had it broke, they were kind of little rock, smacked over, and things like that. Uh, a few bios here and there. Spanish, leaving just a couple of land claims. So the uh, Spanish and French left, and essentially when the Americans arrived, they had essentially a blank slate. All new land, uh, almost completely untouched. And the Americans would leave uh, a mark on uh, Arkansas. So there are a couple of uh, periodic American explorers and the traders wandering through the Arkansas region. The first uh, American families to arrive that we know of were in the Arkansas coast area in the uh, late 1780s. After the treaty was formally uh, enacted, uh, turning over a control of the, the whole region from France to the United States, completed in uh, treaty signed in April 1803, the U.S. Senate ratified in December 1803. Takeover process began. The Americans take over directly from the uh, Spanish in, uh, March 18, you know, in March 1804. I say the process happened so quickly that uh, a lot of areas it was uh, the Spanish did not have time to turn a command these uh, posts over to the French. Taking over directly from uh, Spanish in some cases. The president of that time is Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson, uh, noted intellectual, uh, curious about everything. I want to know just what exactly the America had gotten for his purchase. Fifteen million dollars is not the same as that even today. Uh, as land the United States bought through Louisiana Purchase, it doubled the size of the United States overnight. So uh, Thomas Jefferson commissioned a couple of expeditions to explore this whole region. Most famous of which is the uh, Lewis and Clark Expedition, 1804 1806. Now Lewis and Clark explored the upper Mississippi River Valley, um, starting from roughly the St. Louis area, going into the Missouri River. And toward the Rocky Mountains, the Pacific Coast, and back again. Another famous expedition was Zebulon Pike's expedition, which uh, I tried to find the source in the Mississippi River, but somehow it got lost in the, the Colorado. Don't ask me how. But there actually were other expeditions beyond that. The most important of our expeditions was the Hunter Dunbar expedition. Europeans uh, picked the traders, uh, explorers, and travelers get us some idea of what was in the interior of Arkansas, but uh, Jefferson wanted a little bit more clear view. After all, mainly the fur traders have been exploring this region for 
decades of roaming back and forth. He also had the uh, Diary of Soto's expedition, but the, the most are we tell us some differences in maps, so we still didn't have a clear idea of what exactly was here. In fact, one of the most interesting expeditions in, in the interior of Arkansas was probably the 18th century. Uh, not so much what they found, but just kind of a, a lasting story about the region. Uh, this one French explorer had a, a man of a certain noble breeding was going to go on an exploratory expedition of the New World in French Louisiana. Of course, in the meantime, that means he had to leave his fiance behind. Uh, she had to promise her that he would uh, marry just as soon as he returned. Of course, that would be a couple of years. But off point of being lost from her uh, true love so long, uh, she decided she would stow away on the expedition, disguising herself as a young boy. A kind of small stature, high pitched voice, uh, no one really uh, not know the difference. So they, uh, so as a woman disguised as a man, I don't assume it was just a boy, so they just called her Little John, or in uh, French had a gene. Well, they arrived in Arkansas, they explored around for a while. And all the while, the uh, man leading the expedition had no idea that it was actually his fiance. But one day, uh, she came down with an illness, uh, a very serious one, a high fever, chills, a uh, Apparently malaria of some type, but I'm not exactly sure what it was. And her secret was soon discovered. Uh, she ended up dying in a western Arkansas. They buried her uh, on what is uh, near what is now the highest uh, peak in Arkansas. Named it, uh, named after Pet Jeep Mountain. That's the sort of country. Of course, altitude is something in a relative term, and Arkansas' highest uh, peak is only just a couple thousand feet above sea level. Of course, they have the highest peak, something like seven or eight thousand feet above sea level. Now, Kinley, Alaska, which is at 25,000 feet above sea level. Of sea level. But anyways, uh, after the, uh, this expedition with the Petit Jean, uh, there was very little uh, kind of formal exploration done of any note after a brief kind of a very brief attempt just to scratching the surface. Thus the Hunter Dunbar expedition comes in. The Dunbar in this case of William Dunbar Uh, 
Jericho is curious about the world of Hispanic men, no one would be really that curious about this region. But uh, uh, Spanish Bavarian, this might be an effort to uh, try to uh, move in on the area to uh, try to see Spanish lands. It was really not in the interest of Hunter Dunmore. So they explored up the uh, Washita River, coming through, uh, coming through what is now Monroe, at the Monroe, Louisiana. We found out this kind of an outpost, trading post, was founded in 1780. So that time was about the northernmost limit of, it, of a of settlement along the Washita River, at least up here in Pennsylvania. So they wandered through this area uh, of Fort Arkville, then finally into Hot Springs. And they're very impressed about the Hot Springs area, all the natural springs, the natural beauty of the area. They wrote about that very extensively. Then wandered back down again, our term Natchez, to look at the report. I really guess it's the first one of the really first clear looks at the R region. Now, the first formal census to be taken of that whole area of what would become Arkansas was to come until the 1810 census. Now the Americans have taken over, there's more interest in the area, more people settling into it. The, uh, Census takers divided the area into two specific regions, uh, one called Hope Field and St. Francis. Uh, on the St. Francis River area, population of uh, 188. It's roughly about West Memphis uh, on along the St. Francis River area. And along the Arkansas itself, Arkansas River, Population 874, giving Eastern Arkansas a population of 1,072. Okay, 1,062. So more people have been clearly under Spanish rule, and the, the people are starting to trickle in. By 1814, there are approximately 1,600 people living in the state, and the bulk of them living in the western, in the eastern part of the state. By that time, 1814, Arkansas is going to be part of Missouri. But, uh, Population, even in South Missouri, though, is rising uh, very, very quickly. By 1816, the uh, number of settlements along the Washita River were increasing very rapidly. Approximately 200 families, best we can determine by that time. And the uh, farmers living along the Washita River Valley at that period were probably interested in producing the corn and the raising livestock. And the Arkansas Post area, by 19, 1819, uh, the number of settlements growing in and around the area and growing corn and increasingly cotton as well. Cotton is starting to become an important cash crop for the South, uh, probably because of the development of the cotton gin, which made the processing cotton much easier. And rather, there's a lot of potential profit in cotton more people are starting but really we start seeing it's a boom from the late 1820s, 1830s. And also by 
the bulk of development in the whole region, the lower Louisiana Park is primarily in the Missouri and St. Louis area and southern Louisiana along the, near the Baton Rouge and New Orleans area. Arkansas again is kind of caught in the middle. And for most people, Arkansas, probably through Arkansas, Arkansas is really a stopping place in the way to Texas. And one of the famous uh, road for this area is called the South of Trail. Now, because this was a, such a large area, so unpopulated, there's going to be a lot of different uh, changes in the geographic uh, and the uh, definitions of all the different uh, specific areas. And I say, for there's a time when it was all except for Louisiana, there was a time where this was considered Missouri. That's been changing quite a bit over this time. Now, uh, from the period 1804 to uh, 1805, what is now Arkansas, all the Louisiana Purchase was what's called the Louisiana District. Roughly the southern boundary has been the uh, boundary between the uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, the longest.
But it's not until Louisiana is admitted as a state. That uh, Arkansas form that uh, all the names are changed around. Louisiana is admitted as a state, 1812, with its modern name. And uh, at that point, what had been the Louisiana Territory now becomes the Missouri Territory. That's how it became part of the now Missouri. At that point, it's a little division here between uh, the little notch between the Mississippi River and the St. Francis River. Uh, that was still, that was, that fish did not exist, wouldn't exist until uh, 1890. You can see here on map to age 78, see how uh, the territorial boundary changes. So for a time, Arkansas did have representation in the uh, Louisiana Territorial uh, Legislature for this. Uh, now Missouri, and then for a time, the Missouri Territorial Legislature. At that time, Missouri such a large area that the side of was subdivided even farther into a, yet another territory. But already, Some counties are already starting to form and already starting to develop. But completely out of proportion uh, from what we know today, so it's a completely different type of uh, county organization we, we're now used to. That's <coughs> Missouri is ready to apply for state. But since it's a large area, uh, it's going to be, uh, Missouri is going to be divided into another area. Um, basically, a southern half coming to its own territory, northern half will become uh, the state of Missouri. But Missouri and Arkansas are both caught in the middle of the growing sexual crisis in the United States. There's a growing, in, uh, there's a, a political imbalance between the number of free states and the number of slave states. So those are fairly remote, uh, uh, lightly populated areas. They were uh, slaveholding areas, and there seemed to be no indication that would be changing any time in the near future unless some kind of congressional action was taken. Missouri Territory is fully committed to entering as a slave state. This is uh, causing some pause for a, a Northern Congress. Now, uh, the problem was for Missouri, um, it basically had to wait in line with other, other states coming in, uh, to coming in, uh, waiting to enter the Union. 
And by the time this term is going to come up, there will be no free state to offset it. That is for uh, Union was a alternately admitting free states and slave states. For example, for Ohio in 1803, you had Louisiana in 1812. For Indiana, you had uh, Alabama. For Illinois, you had Mississippi. But for Missouri, there's no other comp no other free state ready to come into the Union. The uh, uh, areas of Louisiana Purchase north of Missouri were too lightly populated. Uh, Northwest territories, all those areas were simply uh, Say Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, simply did not have enough population to become states. Now, for the northern perspective, this is kind of troubling, but uh, and also for the southern uh, perspective, it's kind of troubling too, because the north had considerable advantage now in the House of Representatives. Because of the growing population in the north, it seemed like that advantage was growing only wider for the next census. But with Missouri in the Union, it meant, would mean that uh, a southern, slave, southern slave states would have an advantage majority in the Senate. There's a lot of debate going on back and forth for some time. Until finally, in 1820, a compromise was brokered, known as the Missouri Compromise, or the Compromise of 1820. And it's at this point, uh, Arkansas kind of reenters the picture. Now, part of now, uh, now the main part of this uh, whole uh, debate was settled was Missouri would be was allowed to be entering the, the uh, Missouri was allowed to enter the Union as a slave state, but Maine was split apart from Massachusetts to form a free state. Maine did not like to uh, lower Massachusetts for some time, and uh, that's uh, and so. Uh, Maine's fleet from Massachusetts, so I was a little objection from Massachusetts. But a third provision is later added in. What did the remaining slave territories in the Louisiana, the remaining territories uh, in the Louisiana purchase regarding slavery? The line 36 degrees, 30 minutes, very nice north latitude. Anything north of that line, Louisiana Purchase, would be certainly free territory. And south of that line, there would be slavery. So essentially, it's the Missouri Arkansas State, Missouri Arkansas line, which is with, which was the dividing line for the Missouri Congress. 1819, Arkansas, the Arkansas Territory is formally created. Now, uh, as you see here on the map, page 78, it's not quite the same Arkansas we know today. Initially, this little notch here between the, the St. Francis and the Mississippi Rivers was still part of Arkansas, and Arkansas territories, everything all the way out to the Texas Panhandle. What is now most of modern Oklahoma, except for the Panhandle, was part of Arkansas. We had it all in those days. But over time, successive treaties, primarily the name. Uh, Native American tribes, so this would be whittled down to what is now a, a, the Oklahoma Act is locked off. And because Missouri is becoming a state, the settlers in this region here, it's about three or four counties here in southeastern Missouri, decided they did not want to be part of this new Arkansas territory, that they would rather uh, be part of the new state of Missouri. So the deal is made, and the Citizens of this area, basically, Cape Girardeau, or each of these uh, three or four counties, are allowed to separate from Arkansas and join the state of Missouri. So that's why that funny shapes there. And so the Red River, at this point, is going to be the uh, border for the uh, 
Louisiana Purchase. But there's also a problem with that as well. When the United States bought Louisiana from France, France is kind of a cryptic of the door exactly the boundaries of Louisiana were. And so many Americans assumed that it included the Red River Valley and the uh, portions of East Texas, East Texas and the Texas coast, which was part of the Salt of Colony. So for a while, it seemed like Arkansas's border was actually kind of more out in this area, too. Kind of just county just south of the uh, Red River. But the Adams O'Neill Treaty of 1819 firm southern boundary for the uh, Louisiana Purchase was set to the Red River. This would be a New Spain and Red River was the formal boundary. This line is well up along the Sabine River of this area. The Red River on over. So the Adams of Nice Treaty have the modern uh, border for western Louisiana and the corner for Arkansas here set, as well as the Red River border between Texas and Oklahoma. So everything's starting to kind of take shape with this. The new Arkansas Territory, it's a capitals at Arkansas Post. So very briefly, 1820 census saw tremendous growth in the area, again from 1,062 in eastern Arkansas in 1810 to 1820, held territory's population of 14,273. Tremendous increase just for a short period of time. I'll give you a couple of numbers here. By this time, there are seven counties. See, so Phillips County at that time took up the, basically the area on the upper Mississippi River, population 1,201. Arkansas County is the lower Mississippi, 1,260. Hempstead, which is essentially the Washita River Valley, including Union County, basically all the way out to uh, the western border. This time was the uh, one of the largest counties in the state at 2,248, large not only in size but also in population. Then you have Miller County, kind of a weird story here about this Miller County. It's not Miller County we know today. It's basically uh, the Arkansas half of Texarkana. But essentially, it was the areas what is now uh, Oklahoma. North Red River in Oklahoma, population 999. And after the Civil War, that whole area was uh, Lafayette County. And so they split up Lafayette County into Miller County and uh, Lafayette County. Clark County, this is the northern Washita River Valley to Hot Springs, Arkadelphia area, that's all put together in one county, 1,040. Central Arkansas, Pulaski County, 1,923. Finally, Lawrence County, the largest county. Essentially, all of northeastern uh, Arkansas, basically the north, all northern half of Arkansas, was Lawrence County. And because of its proximity to Missouri and the uh, upper half of the Southwestern Trail, this whole area here, it had the largest population, 5,602. That again, primarily concentrated this area here. So essentially, settlement in Arkansas is taking a kind of westward path from the Mississippi River, 
kind of wandering on inward along the main river bounds. And Arkansas Territory is established. Uh, and James Miller is named as the first territorial governor. So the government arms of the territories are very different from what the, their state counterparts are today. Essentially, what they're going to do is they're going to uh, basically a, just the bare basics of an administrative unit being brought into the area. That territories in their early stages, they don't have a, a, a legislature at all. They simply have the governor, the secretary, and just a couple of judges who uh, basically uh, make a couple of laws, make decisions on a, make decisions on a, various claims, uh, legal issues, and, um, uh, criminal cases, and so. Essentially, it's the equivalent of the modern day county court. Um, but they take on kind of a half a legislative function, a half judicial function. Now, every state and country, there's very few exceptions that went through this entire territorial process. Had the same form of territorial government, went through a third state population, they expand that state legislature. And once they reach the population beyond that, they can start applying for statehood. But first off, the uh, Arkansas Territory is just trying to get off the ground. The thing about James Miller, uh, this is not a job he exactly wanted. I think everyone had a hand up here on uh, the Territory of Governors and the uh, Governor of Arkansas. Well, James Miller, you know, that actually named uh, Miller County after uh, things were the early leaders of Territory of State, they named County exactly. Miller had been a general before 1812. He was a New Hampshire native. Uh, and the president at that time, James Monroe, appointed him to be governor of uh, the Arkansas Territory. The territorial governor posts are not uh, elected posts. You're appointed by the president with the Senate Congress. Essentially, any kind of uh, action that the territory takes, uh, Congress has the right to be. Now, Miller, being a good soldier, of course, was willing to accept uh, Monroe's, uh, Monroe's uh, assignment of him as a territorial governor, but the kind of hesitant about it. Uh, really didn't want to go, but well, okay, I'll take it, I'll do whatever. So, uh, left his wife behind uh, in New Hampshire, said we'll just be away for a short time. Came to Arkansas, and this is several months after the uh, territory had been created. Stays for a little while, says he doesn't like Arkansas. So in 1821, Miller returns to New Hampshire for seven months. Uh, returns to Arkansas for a time period, then goes back to, Ar back to New Hampshire in 1823. And uh, essentially decides to stay there most of the time after that, except for a great break time in 1824. So most of Miller's tenure as the first governor of the Arkansas Territory was spent outside of Arkansas. Not very auspicious to begin. Like I said, you have your territorial governor, that's Miller. You have three federal judges appointed to basically kind of oversee legal issues in the state. 
That board of judges is established, uh, but uh, we have a couple problems with them too. Uh, three of them, once they arrive, two of them uh, leave and never occur ever again. One of them was, a, a replacement was assigned in 1820, uh, sailing down the Rock Light River, uh, <coughs> takes Arkansas, doesn't even bother getting off the boat. So essentially, yes, Arkansas was born on a bad sign. Uh, <coughs> but nevertheless, uh, the others try to make a go of it. Uh, in 1821, there's a several debates moving the uh, moving the uh, capital of Arkansas from Arkansas Post uh, further up the Arkansas River. There's a tense debate over this, just where over just where it should be. Some are suggesting Cadron, essentially near what is now Conway, uh, not inland, that encouraged more growth in the interior of the territory also close to the Southwestern Trail. But finally, it decided in 1821 to be the uh, territorial capital we moved to Little Rock. Because it's right on the Southwestern Trail, uh, it's right on the Arkansas River. Basically, it is right in North America. So you had a fresh water source, you had a thriving uh, trade post, it's on the Southwestern Trail, it's on the Arkansas River. Basically, everything they need. So in 1821, Little Rock's made a terrible capital and has been the capital ever since. And after that, uh, being the terrible capital at this point was the only thing Arkansas Post had going for it and the slowly withered the world. The point where today there's no one actually living there, it's just simply a, a, a historic site. The only real population there is just the people, the uh, nine to five uh, mark service people. Now, uh, a couple other communities slowly being established. Uh, one of them is called a Pope Bayou, which is modern day Batesville. Essentially, it's one of the. Essentially, it's because the location is coming to the prominent city this time period. From this area right up here. Essentially, it was at the game prominence because it's the uh, uh, commercial administrative center for the northern part of the southwestern trail for Arkansas. So they put the game as center of trade at anyone in the northern part of the state, or the eastern part of the state, uh, Batesville is the place to be. Little Rock. Uh, a little bit more force on that. And finally, Washington, which is near present day Hope, uh, had the same thing. It was the, the commercial administrative center for the southern part of the Southwestern Trail. And not a lot left of Washington today. It is a something kind of a tourist attraction. They try they try to restore, try to make it like a more of a 19th century kind of frontier community. Couple festivals that are held every year. Now, in 1825, uh, one of the uh, the uh, major issues regarding uh, Native Americans uh, starts now to more directly affect uh, the Arkansas Territory. By this point, the uh, the United States government is leaning more toward a policy of trying to uh, uh, relocate Native Americans from the southeastern part of the United States to uh, more western parts of the United States. 
various treaties or forcing Native Americans to cede their lands in the southeast. And the United States is trying to trade them for territories further west. Some of these treaties, uh, of course, are more successful than others. Uh, I think what always happens is a, a treaty is signed, uh, the Indians are give, given a certain amount of territory, the settlers start wandering into the area, even land claims start corrupting, and pretty soon a fight breaks out between the Native Americans and the settlers. Native Americans lose. Their uh, lands that they are signed by treaty are shrunk, and the process starts all over again. So at this point, uh, many people are starting to assume a policy of simply relocation would be best for Native Americans, basically keep them out of the way of a place for expansion, just move as far out of the way as possible. So this believe was now Oklahoma would be the, the most uh, logical place. So in 1825, the territory split along its modern border with the Native Americans getting what is now Oklahoma, and, settler, and European settlers, uh, American settlers getting what is uh, now Ar Arkansas. Cherokee nations are signed areas in this area, and uh, so what can be known as the Indian Territory, uh, the Indian tribes fall. And you kind of see here, uh, about this other map I'm handing out. It's how some of these uh, territories are starting to shape up. In Arkansas, in order to try to facilitate settlement, uh, treaties are being made between the United States government and the uh, and various Native American tribes to basically uh, sign territories to the Native Americans and then territories to the uh, uh, settlers. Essentially, the uh, Osage gave a huge area of North East Arkansas in 1808. The North East Arkansas State. The Cherokees are essentially signed this whole area of uh, that's a corner here in northwestern Arkansas. Okay, from about the Fort Smith area to about the White River. Fall Paul would get this area between the Arkansas River and the Sailing River, basically uh, an in or out kind of water. Of course, the Cattle Tribe is still in the southern parts of the state, but uh, it's the territory at this point, but uh, probably kind of left alone. As you can see, uh, Native Americans being cornered in smaller, smaller areas of the state. So now, the, formal, the final settlement of uh, Native American lands in Arkansas and the Indian Territory would have a tremendous impact on Arkansas during its territorial development period, but uh, that still is a little ways off still. Now, uh, one of the other developments of uh, Arkansas was the problem of uh, trying to get people into Arkansas.